Father, Lord Jesus, Holy Spirit, I praise you, I thank you, and I worship you. Lord Jesus, I thank you for all the blessings you have given me. I surrender my intellect, my mind, and my memory into your hands. Heavenly Father, Lord Jesus, send the Holy Spirit upon me. Oh, Holy Spirit, come into my heart, come into my mind, come into my intellect, to enlighten me, so that I may study well. Holy Spirit, my helper, fill me with your wisdom, knowledge and understanding. Spirit of Jesus, give me good memory so that I might be able to understand and remember what I am going to study now. O oh Holy Spirit, I need you, come into me. Thank you Father. Thank you Jesus. Thank you Holy Spirit. Amen. Computers make our work easier, but let's go back to the past to see how it all began. Are you ready students? The computers has become such a basic necessity nowadays. I wonder how work without computer. So the term computer is derived from the word compute, which means to calculate. Computers are the versatile calculating machines that can handle different tasks at the same time. So, let's study first the abacus. Have you still remember abacus in your kindergarten days? The abacus is probably the first counting device. It was invented about 5,000 years ago in China. The abacus was the first mechanical device for calculations which could also perform arithmetical calculations. It is used by sliding the beads across the roots. So, it is divided into two roots. The upper part, we know it as heaven, and the lower part, it is termed as earth. So now, let's talk about the Pascal line. What is this Pascal line? It is the first mechanical calculator in the world. And, why is it called Pascal line? Mm-hmm. The Pascal line was invented by a French mathematician called Blaise Pascal in 1642. It is made up of wheels and gears. It could handle decimal values by rotating a wheel from 1 to 9 steps. So, a 
as we go along in our discussion. Do you know who is the father of computer? He is Charles Babbage. He is known as the father of the computer. He is a British mathematician who designed the analytical engine in 1833. He also introduced the idea of storing and reading the information before processing. So what is this analytical engine by the way? It is an engine powered by a huge steam engine. It can handle a large amount of data and process them at the high speed. So for more information, visit the link below. Okay, now class, let me tell you about the tabulating machine. What is this for and who invented this? Herman Hollerith is an American statistician, invented a machine called the tabulating machine in 1890. It is capable of reading data and processing it and giving the desired output. As what well as I know, this machine can read both letters and numbers. Mm -hmm. And now, I will tell you about the ENIAC and UNIVAC. ENIAC is a short for Electronic Numerical Integrator and Calculator. This machine was invented in 1946 by the two American scientists, John W. Moshley and John Presper Eckert. The ENIAC is used at decimal digits instead of binary digits. In 1951, Moshley and Eckert developed the UNIVAC 1 or Universal Automatic Computer. The UNIVAC was the first commercial electronic computer. It could work with both numerical and textual data. And now, are you wondering what are the generations or the development of the computer generation by generation? So I will bring you to the first generation. In the first generation computers, the computers that were developed during the period of 1941 to 1956. The Colossus, the earliest and the largest computers, is the Colossus. It was used by the British code breakers during the Second World War to decode the enemy messages. Uses very large and expensive because they use vacuum tubes and magnetic drum. So, the first generation computers also consume a huge amount of electricity. So, ENIAC and the UNIVAC are the examples of the first generation computers. So, let's go to the second generation. In this generation, the computers were developed at the period of 1956 to 1963. The second generation computers uses transistors instead of vacuum tubes. The computer becomes smaller in size, they also become faster and cheaper. The advantage of the second generation computers were consumed less power and faster in programming. The second generation computers are mainly used in the atomic energy industry. The IBM Samsung, IBM 650, and Atlas were the example of the second generation computers. So now, let's go to the third generation computers. What are those computers are? So in these third generation computers were developed in 1964 to 1971. They uses integrated circuits or ICs and smaller transistors were developed and they were placed in a silicon chips called semiconductors. This feature helped to increase the speed of the computer. The third generation computers can run different programs at the same time. IBM 1130, the UNIVAC 1107 were the examples of the third generation computers. So let's go to the fourth generation computers. In this fourth generation computers were developed in 1971 to present. 
the fourth generation computers use microchips. Zero and one were coded to arithmetical operations. They are called binary numbers. IBM 4341, the DEC-10, and the STAR-1000 were the example of the fourth generation computers. They are fast and efficient and so widely in use. The mouse and joystick were also developed in this period. The fifth generation computers. Supercomputer is the fifth generation computer. A supercomputer has many CPUs connected together and can carry out a large number of scientific operations in a very short interval of time. That was the history of the computers. So for your activity, make a reaction paper of the five generation of the computer and study lesson one in your computer book. For some clarification, you can contact me directly through Messenger at Angelica Terek or you can reach me also in my Gmail account, terekangelica24 at gmail.com. If you have internet access at home, you can also join my class based on your grade level and section. Create an email address and download in Modu application in your phone or open in modu.com in your browser. So I hope you learned something for today. And before we end, I will say goodbye. Let's pray first. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.